Hi everyone, Piet Calamain here. I hope you're having an awesome day. Now, how to do manual PCB assembly? It is a question I often get. It is not too difficult to do, but there are some tricks to it. So in this video, I would like to share with you my process, what the possible options are to do a manual PCB assembly. Let's dive into it. Now the first step, placing components, you can do that manually using tweezers and uh, my good advice here is to avoid coffee. Uh, I find myself uh, trembling more than I want to when I drink a coffee. So uh, maybe do it early in the morning before you need a coffee and place your components using tweezers. Hold the component with the tweezers, uh, solder the pins with an iron tip or a heat gun uh, and put it on the solder paste if that would be already applied. If you're not using solder paste and just soldering tin, what I would do is before placing a component, you put some solder thing on one of the pads. So I can indicate that here in the slide. So on, on this pad, for instance, I would um, put a small blob of soldering tin with the iron. And only then would I come in with the tweezer uh, and put it on here while I am heating this point with the iron. So in that way, there is one point of that component that is already fixed. Then I would hook up the other side diagonally here. Again, you put some uh, tin on there. The component is then already on the board and then you, you complete all the other parts. So that's some advice from my side if you want to do it like that for SMD manual soldering. Um, the pick and place. So in that case, if you are using a semi-automatic pick and place, you will already have solder paste applied to the board. So you will do that using a stencil. I will show you that in the next slide. And then this semi-automatic tool will allow you to, to have the reels that you see over there in the machine with your components uh, to be on there. And then you can place your components more easily, let's say. Then applying soldering tin. So you can do it manually using a soldering iron, what we discussed before. Or you can use solder paste and a stencil. So the process, uh, you see it over here. So you hold the stencil in place over the board. Then you apply a lot of solder paste and you try to spread it out very evenly. Then afterwards you put the components on top. Um, so what you see on the right hand side, that is some soldering paste that was not applied with the stencil, but just, just with the syringe. That's something that you can do as well. Now then, what else do you need? Uh, of course, when the components are there and the solder paste is applied, you need to solder it or reflow it. So for larger components, and I would say 0603 is still very feasible, you can use a soldering iron, even 0402, but then really drink no coffee that day. Um, heat gun, you can use a heat gun for smaller components, QFN components. You can try BGA components, but the difficulty there is that you don't know if uh, you can apply sufficient heat under the component. Now in that case, if you need uh, sufficient and even heating uh, underneath the component, so if you want to reflow a BGA manually, uh, which I would strongly recommend not to do, but sometimes there's no way around, um, then you could use a heating plate. So the heating plate, you see one over here. Um, you can arrange the temperature there and it will evenly heat up your PCB and your components. So if you want to do a manual QFN and BGA reflowing or the radio modules that we have been using in our smart traffic light example, this could be a way to go. But bear in mind the risk, of course. Reflow of them, that would be, would be your best option. So you completely uh, stencil a PCB like it is here on the lower left image. So you stencil it, you put all components on top, maybe semi-automatic, and then you put it in the oven uh, for a certain amount of time. That is the best way to do it, of course, but uh, such an oven is more expensive. There are some DIY pizza oven um, tricks that you can use. Uh, people get varying results with that. Um, if you need to go that way, I would uh, recommend uh, against it. I would recommend going with an industrial manufacturer instead. And then flux is always uh, interesting to use um, to make the soldering and reflow easier. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something from it. Of course, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll be happy to help. Of course, you can always reach out into our community as well, community.ascentineo.com. So feel free, let us know what you liked uh, about the video. If you liked it, of course, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you like this channel, don't forget to subscribe. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.